everyone, it's me, Lindsay, with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about snow, ice, and mobility. So this is something that is really important, especially if you live in a place like this. We've had nothing but ice and snow for the last two weeks of our winter here, and I know a lot of people deal with this. So I wanted to go over some ways that you can um, improve your safety, reduce your fall risk, and maybe upgrade your mobility aids to prevent those potential falls, which can be so catastrophic this time of year. So let's start off right off with what I would do for footwear. This is a super important one because it can be done for anybody, regardless of whether they have mobility challenges or not. Choosing appropriate footwear and then making adjustments to that footwear to accommodate the current situation is super important. So a good pair of boots with sturdy ankle support and the added benefit of something like yak tracks or crampons or any added um, mobility um, traction that you can put onto your shoe for these type of conditions can make a massive difference in preventing falls. So I like my yak tracks a lot. They go on relatively easy. Um, they have been really durable. I've had these for several years. Yak tracks are great. They have kind of the coil design, which is more uh, situated for like looser, um, snowy, slushy, gravelly, dirt, mud, that kind of thing. If you are dealing with sheet ice or really, really smooth ice, that's when you're going to want things with a more aggressive tread, like a crampon or um, something with studs. That's what you need for those really, really slick surfaces. And I actually really like the um, rotating ice cleat like this one because those rotating ice cleats are nice because they can stay on the shoe and just um, kind of rotate in and out as you need them. If you're going from out in a parking lot, for, for example, and then into a store or the doctor's office or even in and out of homes. It is the biggest challenge with these types of add-ons is they are absolutely a pain to get on and off if you're going to be going in and out of buildings because you do not want to wear these inside. They'll damage the floors and they're actually very slippery to walk on on smooth floors. So you might want to pull what I call the Mr. Rogers, which is having an extra pair of shoes with you at all times. Outdoor shoes with your ice tracks on them indoor shoes that don't. So it may kind of sound silly, but I'm telling you right now, it'll save you so much time and energy if you're not having to take them on and off. Indoor shoes, outdoor shoes. That's kind of a theme throughout this. You're gonna have your outdoor equipment and your indoor equipment if you can. All right, so let's move on to our mobility aids. Now for the first one I wanna talk about, it is just your standard cane. For a lot of people, a standard cane is really their first line of defense for balance management in um, snowy, slippery conditions. Making a few adjustments to your cane can make a massive difference. First things first, double check the foot of your cane. If you're just gonna use your standard foot, make sure that there's a little bit of grip there. You can see this one has a nice spiral pattern on it, and that spiral pattern means it's going to have a little more grip versus perfectly smooth or even really worn cane tips are gonna give you almost no added traction. The next thing up you can do is add a wider base. A wider base rubber foot is gonna give you that much more traction support, that much more balance. Awesome for these snowier conditions. And if you've got ice, I absolutely love this product. It is a flip away. You can see this, you're gonna push two buttons on the sides and then all of a sudden your cane has become, well, it looks like a weapon, but this is going to be an excellent resource to stabbing into those really icy conditions. And the cool thing about this a little bit like that rotating ice cleat is when you go inside, you simply push the thing and you're gonna be able to flip this back down and out of the way and use it in the house without putting holes in your floor. So this is a great option for those who just want something to give them a little security, very affordable and very effective. So that's how I can update a standard cane. All right, next, let's go ahead and talk about one of my favorite solutions. This is a really great option for a lot of folks who um, like to be active in the winter, but are maybe at a slightly higher fall risk or they go places that have really uneven surfaces. Um, these are of course walking sticks. Now I have these ones set up with snow cleats on the bottom. So you can see they're kind of a, a bigger, more displacing of the softer snow. So if I were to walk in a, not a super thick snow, but a fairly thick, we've got about two feet on the ground here. These might not be quite enough for that, but they're gonna help me keep on top of the snow. You can also get them with a more aggressive tip that'll work kind of similar to my ice cleat to help me dig into the surface. They're great because I've got one in each hand and I can really drive and give myself that necessary support as I go. You can go kind of wider to kind of prevent that sliding on side to side. I can stay a little bit narrower. You have a lot of flexibility 
with walking sticks. If you don't have access to or funds for walking sticks, an alternative to them can be snow pole or ski poles. A lot of times you can find ski poles at secondhand stores, or you might just have a set in your basement. If you just have to make a short trip out to your mailbox and back and you have fear about your stability on the snow and ice, grab an old pair of ski poles and help yourself not slide around on your, on your little trek outside. So that's a way you can get away without buying additional equipment for maybe temporary use. Okay, next, let's talk about walkers. So if you're looking, if you use a rollator or a four wheeled walker out in these conditions, they'll be okay on the packed snow like this. But if you are trying to move through anything slushy or sloppy or thick or heavy or even exceptionally slippery, you're gonna want a rollator with a bigger wheel, a more aggressive tire. If you can, there are rollators that are designed specifically for those types of conditions that have pneumatic wheels, that have air-filled tires. Those are gonna give you the best option for those types of conditions. Not everybody has the funds for that, but just know that they do exist. Larger wheels are always going to be better on these types of surfaces. It's gonna give you a lot more traction. This walker is kind of your standard two-wheeled walker. What I love about this option is if you use a rollator, for example, in the house, but you need a little bit more stability outside, again, walking to your car, walking in and out of the doctor's office from a slippery parking lot, having a modified two-wheeled walker can be such a game changer. So this set of um, wheels and skis, we added onto this walker. I'm gonna link the, all of the stuff I've talked about this down below, but you'll see the wheels go on really easy and you can see these are really beefy tires. They have some nice tread on them. They're nice and wide. They work really well in the snow. And then on the back, you've just got plastic skis. So they're gonna kind of glide along. I will warn you, the skis for the back are a pain to get on. We had to use a mallet to kind of drive them into the foot of the walker. They will eventually go on, but you may want to make sure you have somebody who has some strength, patience, and a mallet to be able to get them in. But once they're in, you can see it rolls right across this terribly bumpy, very icy surface. And the beautiful thing is, because the roller isn't going to go particularly fast, this is super stable to prevent those unplanned slips and falls. Works well on ice and snow. Okay, let's talk about wheelchairs for a second. I don't have a wheelchair here to demo with, but I did wanna mention a few modifications that can be made to propelling wheelchairs. This is primarily for individuals who self-propel. So if you use a wheelchair as your mobility aid, self-propelling wheelchairs do have options to make them more mobile in snowy and icy conditions. The first one being wheel blades. Wheel blades go on the small casters in the front, which are traditionally the problematic part of a wheelchair in getting through snowy or sloppy conditions. Those front casters get caught up really badly on any kind of loose um, gravel or snow or slop. So definitely looking into these kind of these ski options. They're a little bit pricey, but if you're outside a lot in these conditions, it can make a huge difference. The next one is the, probably the most expensive option, but a really cool one that I've seen a lot around quite a bit, and that's the Rio Firefly. This basically converts a standard wheelchair into a power scooter. The front wheel is really aggressive with a lot of awesome tread on it, and the handle is up high so that it's easy to use. It's really stable. Folks I know who use this say it's an absolute game changer if you're really active in all seasons. So the Rio Firefly is an awesome product. And then the third one I'm gonna show here is the free wheel. The free wheel is probably the most common all-terrain modification you can see for self-propelled wheelchairs, for manual wheelchairs. The free wheel is really well designed to be able to get across things like grass, mud, dirt, and even you know packed snow and ice because again, it's going to lift those front casters off the ground and give you a much more nimble, a much more um, terrain diverse transport option. And last but not least, let's talk a little bit about power wheelchairs. Power wheelchairs traditionally do fairly well in a, in a snowy environment. You need to be aware of a few things though. One of the first things I always remind folks with power chairs is that your battery may drain faster in cold temperatures. I have had one too many incidents where I'm out and about with somebody in a power wheelchair and we forgot to charge their chair before we left. Usually it would be fine, but because we're out in the bitter, bitter cold, the battery dies twice as fast and it's really frustrating. So making sure you have a really charged battery before you leave or have a backup battery prepared for you if you're gonna be out for a while. Number two, 
is how you're going to protect your component, your electrical components. So if you're gonna be outside in the conditions, snow and wet isn't great to get on the joystick. So having a cover that's going to protect it from the wet, don't forget about that in the wet snow. Um, it can be just as dangerous as the rain for those little electronic components. The next thing is obviously your tires. Having pneumatic tires on a power chair, if that is an option, you can have alternative tires that are designed to accommodate for this type of weather that are gonna be nubbier, they're gonna have deeper grooves, and oftentimes they're pneumatic so you can adjust how much air is in them. Lowering the air pressure is going to improve your grip. So if you're on icy surfaces with a power wheelchair um, or slick wet surfaces, being able to reduce the air pressure in those tires just slightly can make a huge difference. You're gonna have more contact with the surface and move a little bit better. So there you go, a rundown of mobility aids and these beautiful snowy conditions that we have up here in our northern areas. So if you have any questions or comments or maybe have some suggestions for others on what you do to make yourself feel safe on these types of conditions, I would love to hear them down in the comments. And if you need more information like this on how to stay safe and independent in your home and neighborhood, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.